Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks, the channel in which I, John, have a drink. And you're probably wondering today, where in God's name are we? I thought um, things were nearing 700 subscribers or might have even gone over the mark by the time this comes out. I would sort of preemptively celebrate by showing you a full rundown of my current liquor shelf, which normally sits behind me. So we're going to go over everything that's here, which is going to be fun and exciting and fun fun. So we'll start over here. Um, we've got a bottle of Drambuie here. That's that's exciting, isn't it? Oh, I've got to hold this all the way back. Silly me. Um, yeah, so this... hold on. So this is a bottle of Drambuie, uh, Isle of Sky Liqueur. It says a unique blend of aged Scotch whiskey. I was planning on doing a couple of um, <clears throat> cocktail recipes with this. In fact, I think I did feature it about a million years ago on a video. Um, and there's a massive great bigger history on the back, which I'm not going to go into now because that's a lot of text right there. Um, but basically, I... yeah. There's still like a drag in that, so I might be able to do something. But I discovered accidentally that these actually make um, pretty good sours if you use them. Uh, so that's exciting. What do we have next? Uh, we've got Mermaid Gin back there. That's uh, We did a video on that a couple of years ago now. Um, I was in Leeds when I did that. Um, so there was two videos that myself and Will Crawshaw did with this. Uh, he now does a lot of work with Bo Gin. Uh, he was just starting out when I visited him and it was all very exciting. Um, so we did the Mermaid review together and we also did a strawberry infusion of that. And he felt really bad about using it. It was like, are you sure you want me to like use this stuff? And I was like, yeah, it's why I brought it. Go for it. So we ended up making Strawberry Mermaid Gin, which was lovely. Uh, two bottles of Vintage Gordons back there. Um, I need to get around to flogging those again at some point. I've got a bottle of red wine here. I'm not a massive wine drinker. Um, it's a Malbec from 2017. I think it was also bought in 2017. It's not like I've got a vintage bottle or anything. Well, it's not really vintage, is it? But um, yeah, it's just kind of been sat there. Um, I don't know. I don't really drink wine. My fellow doesn't really drink wine. I might end up giving that away, actually. What else have we got? Uh, we've got an old particular here. This is... Hang on, let me get it out. Oh, this is a bottle of Jura. Um, I've not done a review of this yet because it's a bastard. Um, I... So, I bought a couple of sort of single cask releases from all particular of distilleries that typically um, sort of bugger about with their whiskey. Hang on, I'm coming over here. I've got another one here. Ockentoshan. They're another one that's sort of famous for colouring, chill filtering, doing all that nasty stuff to whiskey that you shouldn't really do, but it helps sell more bottles and people don't really give a fuck. So it happens. Um, I want to kind of see what Jura was like before they did all that, and the answer to this particular one seems to be there's a reason they do it. Um, so yeah, that's a, a bit of a shame. Maybe I just got a bit of a duff bottle, because I do know Douglas Lang bottles can be a little bit off sometimes, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway, and um, yeah, not great. Next to that, um, when I finished off the Nika, I'm going to bring this over here, when, whoa, there we go. When I finished off the Nika, um, I repurposed the bottle. This is, can I get that in focus? There we go. Um, this is a whiskey liqueur. Um, I did note down the exact blend that I put together, but basically there's whiskey and Pedro Jimenez Sherry blended together in here. Um, and I've just kind of been leaving it to bottle mature and meld together. And I need to actually try that at some point. I did have the recipe for it down to the exact proportions and I've lost it. So all you need to know is some of the whiskies over here are in this and it's blended with sherry and it's probably going to be quite nice. Um, yeah, what else? There's a couple of books here. Um, so I'm a big fan of like Tristan Stevenson. So we've got the Curious Bartender. This is his rum revolution. Uh, and over here we've got the Gin Palace. And actually on the next shelf up, which you don't normally get to see, this is where I keep books and also Red Dwarf DVDs. The only reason I keep Red Dwarf DVDs is because I still think they are sort of the pinnacle of what you can do with DVDs. Like they're, they're brilliant. There's lots of really creative menus and Easter eggs and it's all very interactive and fantastic. And it, it saddens me. But I challenge anyone actually to say that they're not the best sort of created DVDs um, that have ever existed because they did they really did kind of go the extra mile with that they were also the first DVDs that I owned were series 2 and 3 and I just kind of assumed that all DVDs had menus like that and then I was bitterly bitterly disappointed when I found out they were the exception not the rule uh, what else have we got just sort of classic books and a few more bar books in there as well I've got distilled up here um, this is a book by an old English teacher of mine uh, Anthony Trevelyan uh, it's called The Weightless World it's, it's a good book. And then we've got Mary Shelley's Frankenstein next to it. We've got this ghost-written 
piece here, um, Craft Beer for the People, a brew dog book. And uh, I've had this for a couple of years and I've never read it. The 24 hour <laughs> wine expert, I've literally never put aside 24 hours for it. Sad me, I know. Back to the booze though. Um, so back down here, we're gonna have a lot of gin. So uh, buckle in for that. So we've got our old curiosity, the uh, hot pink tulip. You may have heard, I'm something of a fan of that. Uh, I've got another old curiosity here. We've got the white heather and rose. Not a lot of that left actually now. Uh, next to that, we've got the Globus Cruce for itself, the Chambord. I need to do a French martini at some point or some other slaggy drink. Uh, we've got some mead here. That was a gift from somebody. Um, I can't read it because it's in fluent, not my language. So uh, that could be fun to do at some point. I've got some of the vintage bottles here, which I went over in another video and you'll be able to see a card here. <laughs> is that a finger or is it a, it's a finger? Um, and, oh, over here, actually, I've got an ancient copy of uh, Mrs. Beaton. Uh, it's Mrs. Beaten up at this point, but um, yeah, I probably should be in a museum. That's really falling apart, actually. Oh no, stay. Cool. Uh, what else? Oh, these are interesting. Soco bottles. Uh, these are vintage Southern Comfort bottles. I was going to do a comparison with the modern. I've actually got, I think I've got two different ages here. So I've got two which are the same here, and then one back here, which is a little bit older, which is exciting. Coming to the foreground here a little bit, uh, we've got a bottle of Sipsmith Gin. That's queued for a review at some point. Uh, we've got the Connemara, which we went through before. This, this is a chair leg. Um, I was working somewhere for about six weeks. I won't say where, but basically I was waiting for another job to start because they didn't need me to start for about 10 weeks and I needed to earn money. So I took this job on and I just did not give a fuck. Um, and it was so, so cathartic. Um, like the managers would pull me up. I was just like a jobbing nobody. Um, and the managers would pull me up and I would like just kind of pull them back and be like, well, you've not shown me how to do this. You've not shown me how to do that. Yeah, of course I'm getting things wrong. Also, we are gratuitously understaffed. So don't take it out on me. And I, I got away with it. That was the thing that took me by surprise the most. Uh, I was just like, this is great. Um, I, I've never given that much chat back before or since and it was just I just did not give a fuck uh, and it was in a point in my life where I just I just kind of needed that kind of catharsis to just kind of rock somebody's world a little bit and it was great um, and I don't regret a single fucking thing uh, but anyway um, I was putting out these like cast iron chairs that they had and I dropped one and the leg snapped off um, I mean I'm a clumsy person but smashing a cast iron chair that's a that's a new one. So I kept the leg. So um, they couldn't fix it, to be fair. I mean, you just get a new chair, don't you? But um, yeah. Um, some vintage bottles that I haven't covered. Because um, I actually bought more. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, what am I doing? Uh, so we've got a Tamlavulin Glenlivet here. Hang on. The focus on this thing is ridiculous. It's so shallow. Uh, Tamlavulin Glenlivet. Live it on here. Um, I've heard very good things about old Tamnavulin. I've tried modern Tamnavulin and I was distinctly unimpressed. Um, but apparently the old stuff is really quite something. Uh, it's a 40%er, um, but I don't know a great deal else about that. There's like teeny tiny writing on there, which nobody can read. Uh, I've got a Glen Devron here. It's a single malt, age 12 years. Uh, this is a Gordon McPhail Linkwood. Uh, you don't see many Linkwoods about. Um, Actually, the majority of Linkwood tends to go in Johnny Walker Green label. Uh, Cardew, next to that, I was thinking of doing a comparison to the Modern 12 and seeing how that's gone on. This is a vintage Jim Bean, thinking again of doing the same thing. And a vintage Glenlivet 12, again, wanting to do... You can kind of see where I'm going with this. I was kind of thinking of doing sort of like a series on vintage V new. Um, so that could be exciting. I just need to get the modern samples in now. And this is a quite badly sun-faded Abelawa, so I don't know what to do with that because whatever's in there is probably not going to be a great example of what they bottled. But hey, we'll we'll see. Is there anything else on this level that I've not... Oh, yes, actually. Um, Bren, we've done that. Uh, this is a gin that was gifted to me. We've got some North British there. I've talked about that. Uh, Stockport Gin there, I want to talk about that at some point. And this is something fun actually. Um, I've been looking for a 
an egg white substitute for a while because I don't like using egg whites in cocktails too much. I just think there are a lot of buggering about. So this is Ms. Better's Bitters Miraculous Foma, which is a hell of a name. Um, you pop a drop in and it thickens up cocktail and it is banging stuff and I'm big into it. So if you don't want to use aquafaba, that's an alternative. Down here, oh, here, uh, this is Limoncello. This was gifted to me by a friend. The focus is gone again. Ugh, hate this. Good as we're gonna get, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's limoncello that somebody got me while they were on holiday in Italy, I would imagine, um, from their hotel. This we're gonna be covering fairly soon. This is a Conquer Cold Brew. It's a coffee liqueur. We're we'll gonna be talking about coffee liqueurs and um, some of the things that you can do with them. So stay tuned for that. White Mackay Light, we've done that already. This is Gin Calessi. It's an Italian gin made with cherries, almonds, and there's some other ridiculous thing in there, which I can't remember. I've been meaning to get around to this for a while. Um, the simple fact I haven't is, it's not going to bring any clicks, to be fair. And I'm, I'm trying to get some of the more easy-to-find stuff out of the way first, so then I can kind of go back to the more sort of niche shit that people are used to. Um, another gin as well, which I've not covered yet, but is absolutely stunning, and I thoroughly recommend it. Um, Old Tom Gin with Coconut. It's just so fucking good. Um, I mean, the coconut. Normally when you get, like, flavoured old toms, they can be a bit, okay, where's that flavour? Not with that. That is so heavily flavoured. Um, Johnny Walker White Label, we've done that. Bow Passion, done that. Here's one. Uh, Pickerings. This is their festive edition, the um, Brussels Sprout Gin. I didn't do this at Christmas. I waited until January and was like, cool, now I'll pick it up on sale and kind of keep it for next year. Because I, I tend to keep a lot of booze hat sort of lingering anyway, so it didn't, uh, didn't seem to make much difference. Uh, down here, we've got a couple of Kubokans next to a camera lens, which I'll probably talk about as well. Uh, so these are the Creations. So we've got Creation 1, uh, that's the Stout and Moscatel, and Creation 2, which is the Shuchu, I'm terrible with that, and Virgin Oak Cask. So they're exciting little samples there. I've actually had the distillery in touch and been like, when are you going to review them? It's like, eh, eventually. This is a vintage lens. It's not booze. This is a Jupiter 8 uh, for any lens fans out there. Um, some of like the older stuff that I review, sometimes I use vintage lens on it, just to kind of... It, it's the kind of visual language thing that nobody really notices, but I know about and I like. We've got a Klein Leash here. That's exciting, isn't it? A little uh, 20cl bottle of Klein Leash with the world's angriest cat on it. Uh, what else haven't we seen? There's a few samples from like a couple of Christmases ago and stuff, but most of them you've seen. Here are three things. Um, we've got... hold on. Whoa, hang on. Can I get that to focus? No, going the wrong way. Ugh. Christ's sake. Yeah, as good as that's gonna get. Okay, so I can't really get that to focus properly. Uh, this is a Strathmill 22-year-old from 1992. Uh, it's a Duncan Taylor bottling, 50.2%. Then we've got... what are you? Uh, Strathclyde 26-year-old from 1989. Bottle 2015, it's a Caden Head bottling. And a... whoa. Uh, Tormor, 1995, bottle 2013, cask 20097, Pearls of Scotland. Gordon and Company, 47.6%. So some older liquids from Drinks by the Dram there. Uh, I got those ages ago, I've just not gotten around to them yet. We've got a beef eater there, because clicks. Uh, we've got, this is a Gordon's Martini. I've not been able to get any information about this. I don't know if this is like mega old or just like a reproduction or what it is, but it's got a bit of a low level. So I'm thinking it might actually be a bit of an old bottle that I just got on the super cheap. This wasn't a auction or anything, it was just from a shop and there's no information about it. There's literally nothing on the back or what to do with it, so I, I, I don't know. Um, Lindell's Abbey samples, we've done that already. What I didn't talk about, though, is I've actually got a tour voucher there, which is exciting. So uh, that just came with the samples. It's got a free tour, which is amazing. Uh, this is something of interest. Cointreau Blood Orange. I've been meaning to do some cocktails with that. It's beautiful. If you don't like how bitter Cointreau is, Sometimes that's a much sweeter version. And lastly, we've got this. This is Bladnock 10. I've been really enjoying this. It's a lowland whiskey. Uh, I actually did a blog post about it, and I'll leave the link down below. You can read about it, but um, I won't do the full review now, but basically it's bloody gorgeous. Um, and that's... That's your lot, actually. I've gotten through that in record time. My battery started flashing, so I kind of wanted to get that done quicker rather than 
not quick. So yeah, there we go. That is my my liquor shelf in a in a nutshell, so to speak. So um yeah, uh, comment down below. Um, is there anything that you've seen that you'd like me to cover next? Uh, also, if you want to help me sort of recoup some of the losses from this, there'll be links to my Patreon down below. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Do thumb the video and subscribe and all that nonsense. And I will see you next time where I'll be drinking something else. Mm -hmm.